A large part of the Blue Lock community agrees that Noel Noah is the best striker in Blue Lock, but they think that he is garbage as a coach, so I'm here to prove you wrong. Noel Noah's philosophy consists of super rationality, as he states in chapter 157. Before he even said a couple of sentences after his introduction, he had already put the Blue Lockers under training. The first zone was meant to test their speed in a straight line. The second zone was meant to test their leg strength and endurance. The third zone was meant for endurance as well. The fourth zone was meant to test their jumping ability, and the final zone was meant to test their dribbling, which ended in having to make a controlled shot. This means that he values the numbers of the strikers a lot, since it makes sense to put the people with the best numbers on the field. This does a couple of things. Firstly, this establishes the dog-eats-dog -dog mentality, which means that they will fight for their lives to be a regular on the team. Ego Jinpachi explained this concept the best in Chapter 39, where he explained that the egoists have been deceived. So remember when Ego Jinpachi said that there are five stratums as Isagi perceived to be in the worst group, which was Team V to Z. This was all a lie, as only the fifth stratum existed in Blue Lock, which made them fight like idiots in the first selection. This is key for the hunger to keep growing and evolving as a striker. Ego Jinpachi told them that he's done it for the sake of killing any shitty shred of confidence that they might have had. He devised this trick to nurture a hungry mindset in each of them so that they might become the best striker in the world which is exactly why he has put them through all the training. Noel Noah's intentions seem to be one-on-one -on -one with Jin Patchy Ego here, as Jin Patchy takes Noah as an example for the egoists to learn from. He told them that even the man who is known today as the best striker in the world was raised in the slums of France. This meant that he was growing up poor while surrounded by crime and violence, which meant that he had to change his fate through football. It was the only option he had, which is the thing that Noah tries to spark in them as well, and there are many strikers who went through similar conditions as well as their hunger for goals are incomparable. If they stuck with the mindset of Japan where you'd be fine even if you were to lose in football, they'd never be able to reach his level. And this doesn't only go for football, mind you, this goes for anything that one wishes to achieve. If you have a lot of options and get cuddled, the likelihood of becoming the best, if not one of the best in whatever field you might be wanting to level up in, would be next to impossible. Let me give you guys this as an example. Imagine that there are are two people with the same height, same race, and same genetics trying to get into a professional football team for the same position. Who do you think is more likely to get accepted into the team? The person that gets cuddled has a lot of options, has quite wealthy parents, and had a very good childhood. Or the second example that was born in the slums, had a very rough childhood, and had no parental figure, and he didn't have the option to get a high-level career because of the price. The second example would win 10 times out of 10, even if the other person were to be more gifted unless they bought their way into the team, because there are players like that as well. If you follow Formula One, you might know the Russian called Nikita Mazepin. He came from Formula Two without the actual skills to acquire a Formula One seat, but his dad is a millionaire, if not a billionaire, and funded Haas so that he could drive there. Jinpachi continued by by saying, Blue Lock was created to give the egoists hunger for a goal in order to become the best striker in the world. That hunger will become the ego that changes the world. And that hunger is already a very good thing that Noel Noah is cultivating within the bastard munchen system. I think this might be the reason that Noel Noah has let Isagi and Kaiser do their thing and let them fight. I'm aware that Noel Noah told Kaiser to stop getting so fixated about Isagi because he wouldn't tolerate behavior like that before the Ubers match, but Kaiser's behavior didn't change. It did get a bit less, but that wasn't because he wanted to. It was because Lorenzo was trying his best to have Kaiser in lockdown. But this also breeds the dog-eats-dog -dog mentality as they have two systems clashing with each other. It's like Noel Noah can make them grow passively through them, cultivating their own rivalries with the most prominent one being Isagi versus Kaiser. If we go back to chapter 157, Noel Noah tells them that he doesn't take invisible things like impressions or emotions into consideration. The reason this is so powerful is because emotions usually lead to bad decisions. Let's say that you need to make a big decision like which college or university you go to. If you were angry when you made that decision cause of family circumstances, or sad because of
because a loved one died or something. I doubt that you'd be thinking far enough and clear enough to make the best decision. I get that this is an extreme example, but it's just to paint the picture. On the field, this would translate to better plays which will lead to fewer mistakes and a higher chance of victory. I'm aware that Isagi asking Noah to put Hiori in the game instead of Kiora as an exception since Kiora had better numbers at that time. But Isagi had his own rationality behind it because Hiori had the same eyes as him which enhanced his options on the field and it worked out in the end as well. After that, Noel Noah said that only those with the proper numbers to win will be chosen as regular players which enhances their chances to win drastically as well if you combine it with the super rationality mindset. Noah told the egoists that he'll take the data from the results of the training and from the matches they will end up playing in the neo-egoist league. And only those who make it into the top 11 will be used in the matches, and those below will not, which highlights the dog-eats-dog -dog mentality that I was talking about earlier. Bastard Munchen is a team that wins with logic and nothing else. It's data survival based on numbers. If you're enjoying this video so far, consider subscribing. Another argument would be that he doesn't give the egoists many tips, which apparently makes him bad. But the reason why this isn't a bad thing is because he makes them think for themselves. This is such an important skill to have in sports, and especially football. The reason why this is so crucial in football is because there isn't much restrictive movement going on. You have your assigned positions, but the field is so big, and there are so many variables in football that you need some flexibility unless you're called Mark Snuffy. There's another example that Jinpachi gives that makes this make more sense. In Chapter 8, Isagi thought that he had figured out what Jinpachi meant by making a 1 from 0, but Ego Jinpachi said that he wasn't quite right as he started talking about the country of Japan. He told the egoist that the Japanese are people who rejoice in having a fixed role to play. Whether as a society, as a group, or nearly anyone, it's their national character to fulfill one's role. And this is easily applicable to sports as well. He gave baseball as an example. In baseball, you have pitchers, catchers, infielders, outfielders, first batter, and even fourth batter. The pitcher's role is to throw the baseball towards the catcher with the goal of retiring a batter. The catcher's role is to catch all the pitches that are thrown by their team's pitchers. An infielder is any of the four players who regularly play between the positions of first base and third base. He defends those spots. An outfielder is a person playing in one of the three defensive positions in baseball or softball and is farthest from the batter. The first batter is the first player in the batting order. And last but not least, the fourth batter is a cleanup hitter, which means that he is the most powerful hitter on the team. You might have spotted a trend by now, which is that they all have clearly assigned roles that they need to follow, which is Japan's biggest strength. Baseball has a system of defense and offense divided into innings. It's a field where the players are isolated and rarely interact with one another. But football is different. Offense and defense intertwine continuously on the field, and the sport is played in close quarters. It's a game that can't be won through perfectly fulfilling just one role. This is why they need the individual power of a striker, which is where each of their strengths come in. As Japan stands now, the only positions that Japan can be proud of on the field are midfielders and sidebacks. Those are the ones who work hard for the team's sake. Positions are mainly focused on following established patterns so that they can leave it to the strikers to become their team's foundation. It only makes sense for them to be so good in positions like that. And thanks to that selfless sacrifice, it can also be said that Japan's football hasn't evolved beyond that at all. There can be no revolution when they stay like that, as Jinpachi asks them to rewrite their common sense. Scoring goals in football means destroying their opponent's structure, which means that strikers are destroyers, which is exactly what Noel Noah is trying to do as well. A goal is nothing but instilling chaos in their opponents. It's a revolution on the field as Jin Pachi urges the egoists not to confine themselves within the boundaries of a role. They are beings incapable of following such a system. To become the foundation of the team, they have to carry their weapons and do so something to disrupt the enemy's organization, to make them yield and destroy them completely. Every single elite striker carries their own unique and unparalleled weapon. He wants them to reflect on it and deliberate what their bodies and brains are capable of. Man, this way it kind of feels like Jin Patchy is a carbon copy of Noel Noah. You can see the will and drive of a striker through their ability to think for themselves and make them question their beliefs. And from this, he can also see who bites and who doesn't. Isagi just happens 
happened to be the first one to take the initiative. In chapter 158, Isagi goes up to Noah to ask him what he had to do in order to increase his ranking. Noel Noah makes Isagi think about what he has and needs as he asks Isagi what his weapon is. Isagi told Noah that his weapon is a direct shot, as Noah asked him what was necessary for him to use that weapon. Isagi told him that he needed to get past his opponents and be unmarked while near the goal, as Noah asked him another question again, which is what the necessary play would be to do that. Isagi told him that he needed a wide field of view and the stamina and focus to keep searching for a hole in the opponent's defense during the 90 minutes of a match. After that, he asked him yet another question, which was what abilities were necessary to achieve that ideal. Isagi didn't know as Noah told him that he was unable to verbalize his own ideal self. This means that there is wishful thinking involved in how he plays in the field which would decrease the potence that the rationality has on a player. After that, Isagi told Noah that he needed a variety of plays and a base physical ability in order to handle any type of opponent. So Noel Noah asked him if he would beat him if he got all those things mentioned, but Isagi didn't know as Noah told him to review his entire way of thinking because his own values had already failed him just now. How is he supposed to chase a goal when he doesn't know exactly what he needs to get to his destination? There's another example Jin Pachi gives that works really well here. In chapter 196, after Yukimiya missed his gyro shot, Igo Jinpachi told Henri that he had to juke the last two defenders for him to definitely score, and also win a 1v1 duel against Chris Prince. By that time, the rest of the defense would have caught up, but his chances of scoring were pretty much zero either way. In other words, Yukimiya deluded himself in being the best as he failed to visualize an ideal where him scoring would have been all but guaranteed. This is why it's so important to be able to visualize an ideal ideal situation that you can explain and verbalize completely, as Noel Noah said. This is tied into his super rationality, and the verbalization part is in order to execute on their knowledge and plans in reality. Confidence and delusion are two completely different things, as Yukimiya was simply living in a deluded fantasy with him as the stupid hero, as he said that success won't come to people who blind themselves to reality. Noah continues by saying that not knowing means there is wishful thinking in his thought process, which is merely normal and that lack of logic can destroy any plan as a result. Noah does not choose people like that to be regulars, as he wants Isagi to bring him an ideal that can win against him, which is kind of his curiosity as he got curious about what Jinpachi Ego has in store with this project. Watch this video next where I explain the reason Ego Jinpachi chose Isagi Yoichi.